All right, so this is going to be my, uh, you know, my thoughts on Shield Hero, and it's going to be my first kind of review type video. So with that being said, let's just roll the intro. Day trip took it to ten. Let me tell you how I come through with the one two, kicking shit like kung fu. Treat a bad bitch like she average. I'm a savage, no hoe. What you want, do? I'm about cash with the round fast. I'ma get that little nigga by any means. So, before I actually get into, um, you know, the anime itself, I'll show you how I actually score things from you know zero to ten. So we'll start off, uh. And you know, I'll tell you what each one means from 0 to 10. So when I say something's a 0, that means like don't watch it, right? So there's like nothing you could get out of the, the show or piece of media, right? That I'm saying that it's a 0. A 1 would be like it's pretty bad. There might be one good thing about it or something like that, right? 2 means like it's pretty bad. You know, some things, it has more going for it than one but not really you there's not really much to say about it a three it's bad it's like it's below it's way below average nothing it's it, you, you could tell when something's a bad show and when something's just mediocre which is number four which is just below average you know it, it, it takes the normal tropes that you would find in an anime or you know movie or um, just any piece of media and just like does less with you know takes that generic thing and makes less um, with it and then five is just the standard average kind of show you know you you could watch it but there's gonna be a lot of shows like it and then this is when we get into the positive reviews right if I say something's a six that means it's good right it's a little bit better than uh, the average, and you know I would recommend watching it. A seven would be pretty good, right? It does a little bit, you know. Not only does it distinguish itself from the average, but it goes a little bit step um, after that, right? So that means it's pretty good. An eight would be a great for me. Not only does it rhyme, but I would say that uh, to get this kind of score, it would have to do something. It would take the uh some you know trope and spin it on its head in a, in a good way or could take a normal trope and do something interesting with it and it goes even further than just you know making itself different and making that difference good and then we get into nine and when i say i want to give something a nine out it's like basically it's very good it's it's in, it's amazing right barely like it does either the trope or it does something unique with it very well it gets good story good characters and um maybe good artwork with it but artwork isn't really that important to me and then we get to a 10 and a 10 would be for me something that's you know a must watch right a nine you might say like oh you don't want to watch it because it's like your certain kind of genre you don't like but a 10 i would be like you gotta watch this you know anime or manga or you know show tv show or movie things like that right so let's get into the actual review now of shield hero so uh i'm gonna do things a little bit different for this kind of uh series i'm doing when i do my thoughts on things i'm gonna say the score first and then i'm gonna explain why i gave it the score instead of doing the reverse so if you guys don't want to watch the series and you just want to hear my opinion straight out you could just you know go to the first couple minutes and just you know see what i gave this certain piece of media you know what score but um for for this these kind of videos they're going to be a lot longer because i i'm i'm probably going to rant or um you know go off topic a lot because these aren't scripted videos so uh the shield arrow i think I would give it a 7 out of 10. I think it's pretty good, but it has some shortcomings and some flaws, and I'll get into that right now. So, let's get into the genre that, you know, that Shield Hero is, right? So, if you guys don't know, it got, you should have known, because it was the biggest 
uh, show of winter anime. So, the Shield Hero is an isekai anime. So, when I get into this kind of, like, reviewing process, we gotta see, you know, how he gets summoned, what's his purpose uh, for being summoned, what is his, you know, overall goal in the story, uh, what's the conflict, how, how are the characters, how is the world, right? So, the purpose on what, how, how, let's go with how he was summoned. He goes to the library and he opens his book because he, uh, he tends to read books when he doesn't have a lot of money. So that's what Nafumi does, which is the main character. He opens a book and he's reading this story about, uh, these four heroes who get summoned to another world. And one of them, each of them have a different weapon and one of them has a shield and Nafumi does two things when he's reading this he uh, comments on the fact that the shield is uh seems to be a weak weapon and more more defense and he also says that the princess in the story is a bitch you know and this is to foreshadow what's going to happen literally in the first episode so it's not much of a spoiler um so i'm gonna go i'm gonna keep it within the anime uh you know, kind of story, but I might reference some things from the manga, so if you don't want to get spoiled on that, then, you know, you can read the manga and then come back to this video or something. So, we get to the part where he actually gets summoned. Him and three other people get summoned into this kind of fantasy, fantasy um, uh, you know, world. Fantasy world, right? And these kind of, like, wizards or mages or something that work with the kingdom actually summoned them uh and of course he uh, he gets the shield which he didn't really want so it's there's like parts in this show uh near the beginning that questions how or it makes you question when you like take a second look at it right um so this show is called rising of the shield shield hero so we need there's going to be some sort of like uh, growth of the shield hero in terms of power and influence obviously because of the title so right away we get to the part where we you know they're at we get to the part where they're like um you know with the king and the king asks everyone's their everyone's name except for nafumi which is the shield hero and you know looking back on it uh you know having uh, knowledge after the fact of this happening you could see kind of little hints within the story showing that people don't like the shiro right off the bat right and this could just be seen as like a comedy relief at first right but then you know we get later on the day and you know they're talking to the nafumi saying that it's the weakest class right the shield is right and you know, things happen later on and no one wants to join Nafumi's party except for one girl. This is mine, which is later to reveal to be the princess um, later on in the story. And for some reason, not, uh, or it's that classic trope of a, you know, attractive woman like joining your party and things like that, right? The first episode is supposed to make you think like this is a generic isekai kind of story. Right, but then it gets a little bit weird, and you get to see the signs in between that make it, you know, show that it's not your typical, or it's showing like early warning signs. Right, like the first part is mine telling the shield hero Nafumi to, you know, waste all of his money on gear. Right at the beginning, and she basically says, you know, we'll just get it back later. Right, and it's a weird sign because like she's kind of making him spend all the money on her. And then later on, when we get to the night, now Fumi doesn't want to drink, right? And they explain, um, not really in the show, but they think they explain it in the light novel, why he doesn't drink. And that's basically because of his tolerance for drinking. But we don't know that yet. So we could just, it doesn't really make uh, matter at this point. So it's kind of questionable why she would want him, want him to drink that, uh, you know, with prior knowledge, because if you just, you know, watching the first episode, it's kind of normal, right? And then we get to the next day, and Nafumi's actually, 
you know, uh, accused of raping her. And, uh, you know, this was a big story when it first came out, you know, about, um, you know, with the Me Too movement and stuff like that. Um, my personal opinion is that it's the author is obviously not saying that all women do this or all victims of, you know, rape are, you know, false or even like a good percentage of them are false. She's just saying that things like this could happen. And it makes sense for um, the spear hero to fall to like you know to believe, uh, you know. It makes sense for the spear hero to believe mine, but not really the other heroes. Because let me break it down for you, right? The spear hero has this you know attractive woman, you know, kind of like crying on her on his shoulder, right? You know, and seeing that firsthand is a lot different than just you know hearing about it. So, it would make sense for, um, you know, the spear hero to, you know, uh, believe her. I think most people in that situation would believe the person who's crying. Um, but it doesn't really make sense for the other two heroes to believe mine right off the bat. Because they're all heroes, right? That means they all have the same, you know, qualifications to be selected. So, that means if one hero is you know able to do this like horrific crime that means all of them uh theoretically would have no problem doing a crime if the shield hero is able to do a crime like that if that makes sense right look look um look at it like this right he wouldn't be selected as a hero if he was a rapist right and you know they don't really question that none of the heroes question that right so that's kind of a, a little problem for me, like, why would a hero be summoned that, you know, is, you know, this kind of person? It doesn't make sense, right? And, you know, another problem is, is with Nafumi, um, not his character, but some things that he does, like, he doesn't, he doesn't figure out that the world or um, the country that, he, that he's in is actually has a religion that's against the shield hero. It's like, he never finds this out like i'm pretty sure he would have just by you know how people act and the main religion that symbol is literally all the four heroes except for now fumi's it's like weapon so yeah um now fumi okay let's get into the uh kind of next part of you know the world what's its purpose why was he summoned it's basically to kind of save the world from these waves uh, of monsters right so that they can like stop them and when they're stopped uh they you know it's like one of those like uh prophecies like these heroes will come to save the day uh these waves that will try to destroy the countries right so what's the overall goal for Nafumi at this point his goal is to level up and kind of survive in this new world when everyone kind of hates him and believes that he's a rapist so that's kind of his goal for right now so that's kind of what he's doing right now and i guess this kind of the differentiate so um you know makes it you know this isekai anime makes himself a little bit different than other isekais because not only is there one hero but there's actually four and the main hero is kind of hated right and Nafumi, after getting betrayed, he becomes more, um, less, he becomes less trusting and he becomes more, he just starts not caring, right? And he becomes more, uh, angry at the world, right? And here's one problem I have with the anime compared to the manga, and, and that is that, yeah, at first he starts off as a jerk, and he still is a jerk at overall in the series but he's not really that much of a jerk compared to you know the manga in the manga there's literally um you know we we can skip ahead a bit right you know the part where Nafumi after the second wave after he you know fought glass he actually goes up to the king and you know makes the king beg for you know his secrets of getting stronger right and he literally says I will kill you you want your, do you want your head chopped off right he literally says that to the king he says a less you know 
a tamer version of this in the anime. But here's a bigger part, right? When he walks out, storms out of the room, right? As normal. Uh, Melty is there, which is the uh, second daughter of the king. And the first in line for the throne. And basically what happens is in the anime, Nafumi just like writes her off, tells her like, you know, stop following me and things like that, right? But in the manga, he basically says, I have the power to kill you too. And granted, you know, keep in mind like, Melty at this point is still a child, right? So he's he's fine with saying that because he doesn't trust anyone, especially the royal family. So he's much of a jerk in the manga. And I think the anime kind of missed that opportunity because there there aren't many like you know big you know mainstream like animes where the main character is a jerk to this extent especially the people um you know that kind of deserve it right and Afumi makes sense to be like how he is because of his circumstances you know what you would have noticed uh from those panels that i showed you is that the uh, art style is a little bit different compared to the anime or the manga compared to the anime uh, in the manga it's more of a rounder style but in the manga the features that everyone has especially the chins and things like that are more sharpened I just wanted to add that in a little bit so you know uh, going on the fact that Nafumi is more of like a jerk in the manga uh, the part where he gets rough talia right there's a few reasons why he picked Ross Talia that the anime didn't tell you. Other than, you know, him not having that much money to actually spend on, you know, a good slave, a high-level slave. He actually chooses Ralph Talia because she looks somewhat like mine. Um, I believe it's in the, in the light novel that actually tells you this, Right? So there's there's a few cases where you could say that, you know, uh, how you know, it could, there's a there's a few things you could say on why Nafumi was, you know, kind of repressed in the anime when it comes to, you know, his character. We could get we you know there's other cases like uh, the part where you know Nafumi redeems himself and proves that he's innocent. In the manga, uh, it was Nafumi's idea of actually killing them, while, it, and it was the queen who said, you know, we probably shouldn't do that because it would create like a power struggle after just killing the church. It would look bad, right? So, in the actual anime, it's kind of the reverse. The queen in the anime is the one who suggests, uh, you know, death and things like that, right? And it was like kind of tele not televised, but it was shown to the public, which I don't believe it was in the uh, manga. They didn't even get to the part where they were like chopping, you know, they were putting the gu guillotines, right? That was not in the manga. Basically, Nafumi said, yeah, we should kill him. The queen said, no, that's not really a good idea since we just took out the, you know, church. And so Nafumi's all right. Let's just rename him to this and that, right? you know, trash and bitch, you know, so that's a kind of a big difference in character, right, and it's not just Nafumi he does, that happened, that like, this happens to, right, it also happens to Raftalia, right, uh, with the noble, the fat noble that, you know, used to own her, uh, you know, in the manga, she actually goes for blood, she is trying to kill this man, but her you know, sword is actually smacked out of her hand. And you might say, looking at this panel, you might say, well, it just looks like she threw it. But no, there's a part where you could see where she, like, um, you know, hurts her hand, right? If she would have thrown it, she wouldn't have grabbed her wrist like that, right? But in the anime, she's like, she takes a higher ground for some reason. She says, if, you know, if I kill you, then I'm just going to be like you, right? And that doesn't make sense at all. I don't like when anime or just things in general kind of use this like idea because no it's not you're not gonna be like this person right because this man tortured children to death right so if you kill him oh okay you're a murderer apparently in your eyes but you're not a person who takes sadistic pleasure in torturing you know small children 
right? Like, come on. It's not the same comparison. So I think that was kind of a weird way of, you know, trying to make the characters look um, more kind of, I guess, relatable in a way. More, um, have a higher, like, no, like, I don't know how you explain it, but it's to make it more mainstream, I guess, in that idea. All right, since we got the characters out of the way, let's get into the actual world and how it's built. So, the kind of big thing is the power system. It's not really explained too well how the, the, the power system really works in this kind of world. Especially in the anime. There's only like, we know that there's like different types of magic. Like different affinities. And you could have multiple ones. And there's like three tiers of spells. There's first. And then... They're, they're all in like, I think, German. Uh, there's like first, second, and third. But they're all like in German. But the anime says fast instead of like first. Um, I believe. I believe the second the, the, the second tier and the third tier is in German. But the first is in, in English, right? So, it's not really explained too much. The world itself is not... They don't go into too much detail into it. There's other kingdoms and things like that. Um, right, but there's not much we know about. There's are, there are things like, we know there's a slave trade, and we know that there's like, you know, magical stores and things like that, right? But there's not too much fleshed out. You know, there's villages and things like that. Typical, like, fantasy world stuff, right? Um, we don't see much until, like, we get to near the end of the anime where we actually go to the island to do that like double XP weekend basically so here's my kind of problem with that kind of part in the anime I think I honestly think they should have ended the, the season with Nafumi getting redeemed and doing all the island stuff in the next season because they rush the island scenes a lot there's a lot of things that are missed out and a lot of character like um, development that could have happened and a lot of, you know, scenes that we don't get to see, which they could use in season two as like a flashback. But I would have wanted it to be its own thing and have, you know, more episodes because they kind of rushed. Um, I think what was it like the first, the last like three, two episodes with the island scenes, um, you know, like. Uh, they even like made the characters meet up you know earlier than before like the scythe hero and Nafumi shouldn't have met at Naf- um, Rough Talia's village they actually should have met on the on the boat if I remember that right so the things that they missed out on was the character like kind of development between Nafumi and La Ark I think his name is which is the scythe hero um, there's also things like the green hair green haired girl who joins Nafumi's party at the end I think you know how how she gets kicked out of her party uh isn't really explained too well in the anime basically they kind of they skip over in that entire scene well what basically happened was she was blamed for breaking something a very important item for the bow hero and she gets blamed for it and she gets kicked out that's all they only explain this in the anime through like some you know words of dialogue between Nafumi and um the girl I forgot her name right but in the actual like manga we get to see uh through flashbacks and you know we actually see her it, the way that they meet up is a little bit different also in the anime and in the anime Philo's the one that finds her trying to kill herself right but in the manga we actually find her with um, the spear hero, Multiyasu, trying to, like, kind of help her, and, and Multiyasu, like, signals Nafumi to come and help her, because he doesn't know what to do, you know, and that's, like, a little bit development between the two, since at this point, they're, like, not friends, but they're, like, they're, you know, they're fellow heroes, right, and, you know, there's, uh, I'll go into the other things that they missed out, right, you know, in the manga, 
they actually do a kind of flashback to what happened and you know Nafumi can really uh, sympathize with her because he was also accused of false allegations also and you know this would this would have been a great like point in the series you know after all this is done to you know give him a little bit more character development because someone's going through the same thing that or to a le obviously a lesser extent because some you know com comparing something like breaking something to you know rape is completely different but it's in the same you know kind of general idea of false accusations so it could have been a nice part part to like you know give nafumi the little extra character development and also we get to see nafumi you know confront uh you know the bow hero about this and it's one of those few times where nafumi is right in this situation and you know the bow hero can't say anything other than you know make up lies on the spot saying that he did this for her protection that he didn't want her to get hurt and things like that which is obviously not true he was just jealous or he didn't like the fact that she was actually helpful in you know the the you know the fight against the scythe hero using her like quick you know thinking of putting those like alcoholic berries in one of the barrels to shoot at them so he was kind of mad about that because you know uh, you know all, um, all the times that she's been treated every time we see her she's always been treated bad and it's kind of like disturbing in the way because she actually has fallen in love with the bow hero but the bow hero doesn't care about that right he just uses her as how he how he sees it right he wants to be the hero he doesn't care about anyone else and this is a good you know um this could have been a good you know you know scene in the anime where now fumi confronts this hero and how he's been treating this girl and you know now fumi gives this girl the opportunity to show um him that you know she can be strong right and that could have been you know all this could have been used in season two and that's why i really think that they should have saved this for season two and just expanded you know on some of the more missing content to fill in those you know 24 episodes that they needed and i'm pretty sure they went past the 24 episode limit um or that kind of idea that anime should have 24 episodes per season at least for big you know animes so overall the shield hero has an incident concept and an okay like power system it's not really explained too well in the anime at least the first season uh, if we ever get to if we ever get like a second season it'll like explain more because they do explain more of the power system in the manga after you know now fumi gets that other person in his party um i wish they would have made Nafumi more of how he is in the manga i'm pretty sure in the light novel he's even worse as like a you know he's more of a even more of a jerk more of a you know kind of asshole in the uh light novel you know but this is why all these combined I think it's a pretty good anime but I don't think it's great so that's why I gave it a 7 I know this video is long and I, uh, I you know for the people who do get this far uh, I really appreciate that so I, I know this video won't get many views because even though a lot of people voted on that I should you know do this series uh you know, my channel is mostly what if, so I know that people aren't going to, you know, go for that kind of stuff. So, with that being said, next manga slash anime that I'm going to review is Love is War. I really like the series, and then on that series, I'll have a poll on what, you know, I'll have like a request, like, what do you guys want, and things like that. So, uh, with that being said, this is in the video, so yeah.